Welcome back to the series where I try to explain every element on a periodic table and show off what they are used for. In this video, we will go over the element 61 to 70, from promethium to atrium. To start off, we have promethium, a radioactive metal that isn't commercially used outside of research. Some promethium, however, is used in nuclear batteries, which captures the radiation emitted by the element and turns it into light which then powers a solar cell and converts this radiation into electricity. Next, we have samarium, a soft metal that is able to absorb infrared waves and neutrons, making them useful in nuclear reactors. A common use for this element is in samarium cobalt magnets, which is one of the most powerful magnets and has the highest resistance to demagnetization. Next, you have europium, another soft metal that is great at absorbing neutrons, making it useful in nuclear reactors as well. Funnily enough, europium is actually used when printing euros, since it glows red under ultraviolet light. This means that counterfeit currencies can be detected easily if the banknotes don't contain this red glow. Next, we have gadolinium, the best absorber for neutrons. However, it is more commonly used in MRI machines to scan for cancer tumors instead of in nuclear reactors, since gadolinium isotopes that absorb neutrons are quite rare. Gadolinium is also used in alloys with iron and chromium, making them more resistant to high temperatures and oxidation. Next, we have terbium, a soft metal that is used in fluorescent lights and mercury lamps. Sodium terbium borate is a compound that is used to make laser lights and sound electronics, including loudspeakers and computer disks. Next, we have dysprosium, a soft metal that is commonly used in nuclear rods. Dysprosium oxide, or dysprosia, combined with nickel makes a cement used to cool nuclear reactor rods. This element isn't used often since it reacts easily with water and air. Next, we have holmium, a soft metal found in alloys to make magnets. It also gives off a red or yellow color for glass making, and it may also serve some purpose in laser surgeries. Holmium filters are used in spectrophotometers to check the wavelength of ultraviolet and visible light. Next, we have erbium, another neutron absorber but it is not commonly used as it slowly tarnishes in air and reacts with water. It is used in optical fiber cables to boost their signals of transmission, and they can also be alloyed with vanadium, which makes them easier to work with. Next, we have tholium, one of the least abundant elements on Earth, so it is quite expensive. When irritated, this element can produce x-rays, which is potentially used in portable x-rays one day. It also may have applications in laser eye surgeries. And lastly, we have Aterbium, an element named after a village in Sweden, Utterby, where it was first found in a quarry. It doesn't have too many uses, as its main use is for refining and alloying with stainless steel. And there we have it, those are the elements 61 to 70 explained, from Promethium to Aterbium. I hope that y'all have learned something interesting today. Thank you for watching, and good luck with everything!